What is cropping up stockers? Zach, the stock cropper, coming with a video today from the farm shop uh, talking about the new toy that I bought uh, here uh, before the end of the year to kind of expand upon the work that I did last summer. Uh, I bought this uh, interesting uh, looking plant, corn planter, bean planter here. And uh, today's video is going to be catching you up with uh, what I'm planning on doing with this thing uh, for the 2023 cropping year. So this is a John Deere 1700 uh, planter originally. Originally it was set up to be a six row, 38 inch twin row planter uh, from the factory. And the gentleman that bought it uh, was on the Harry Stein kick uh, back about a dozen years ago, 10 years ago when 12 inch uh, corn uh, equally spaced in all directions was kind of the rage. And uh, this planter was set up uh, for that uh, configuration. So some of you might be asking, well, what are you doing going to 12 inch corn? I thought you were interested in wide row concepts and uh, I most definitely am. So the, the plan and intention of buying this thing or the attraction to me and finding a planter as rare as this in Iowa uh, was to get it converted back into its original state. So, uh, you know, there's a reason that people went away from the 12. This guy, you know, did the 12 inch corn thing that owned this, tried it for three years, figured out uh, it didn't work that well uh, because of the density and the stresses that come in, especially in hot, humid summers with 12 inch corn. And so this was basically just used as a 12 inch bean planter. Um, so my idea is to get it back more into its original state where we're just going to have a couple row units on here uh, with set up for the twin row gap uh, with, you know, roughly an eight inch spacing. Ideally, what I want to do is to be able to run the twin rows on top of my strip till passes, uh, if possible, uh, if they line up with a 30 inch uh, increment and, uh, and have this thing really designed as uh, kind of a, the gap, the gap men's, if that's a term yet, uh, not it should be, the gap men's uh, kind of playground planner where we can change the alignment quickly and easily um, to test different maybe twin row spacings, you know, whether it's an 8-inch twin or even if you did like how it's set up currently as a 12-inch twin row and try to combine that with a uh, regular, uh, you know, a regular corn snoop, bring two rows together or uh, actually the center to center gaps between the twins. So the plan for this year is to repeat what we did last year in doing uh, a 60 inch twin, um, a 90 inch twin like we did last year, but also splitting uh, the middle uh, in between and doing a 75 inch twin uh, or 72, 75, somewhere in there. It'll, it'll depend on how it works out on the bar here. Uh, but those are the concepts uh, that I'm really excited about uh, testing here for uh, the 2023 season. So the other piece to this puzzle that you got to think through when you're doing this gap corn is how are you going to run a tractor through it, especially when you're doing 60 or 90 inch twin or if you're going to change things up. And so this takes some mapping out of things. But what I've done is uh, we're going to put uh, my MX240, which uh, needs a bath here. Uh, we're going to put that out to 120 inch spacing. So in order to do that, we bought these wheel spacers um, uh, out of a uh, place in St. Ansgar, Iowa. And we're going to uh, flip these out, put the spacers on, and then we'll move the uh, uh, inner, inner wheels out, take the duals off, and have this tractor set up for 120 inch uh, spacing, which will align with um, 60s or 90s or... 72, 75, where we don't have to worry about the tractor uh, running things down from a tram line uh, potential. So a lot of things that you got to kind of think through. I've been whiteboarding on this uh, uh, all winter long, um, and I'm hoping that it's going to come together. I've made a lot of assumptions in taking the plunge to buy this thing, uh, but the, one of the things that's really exciting to me is the fact that I've got, you know, there's enough row, there's 18 uh, John Deere twin row units on here. So I would have enough if I wanted to make a 60 inch or a 75 or a 90 inch uh, broad acre corn planter. I have plenty of row units here to do that eventually uh, down the road. And that was one of the big attractions to me is having enough row units to do it on something that's wider than the 20 foot bar that it sits on right now. So, but the plan is, is to use the 20 foot bar, uh, for the experimental stuff. We'll see what we learn. And then, uh, 
who knows, maybe within a year or two, we will have uh, a much wider planner uh, when we have some more confidence in not only the data with achieving yield parity, that's the whole idea. I don't want to have a system where uh, corn yield is less than what 30 inch rows would be. I don't think that's something palatable to people in the mass, um, but something that's parity and then what can we do with that unique arrangement uh, in between those gaps. So, you know, I took some of my 750 corn money and I bought this uh, this twin row planter for experimental stuff. You know, some people are buying $40,000 rangers. Uh, I'm buying for, you know, I'm buying corn planters to, uh, to play with and try to learn while we have uh, some money in the bank right now for the next downturn, which I'm feel is coming and that's why I put this stuff out here is to share with other people that are looking for some of these unique concepts and learn enough hopefully in enough time that we can actually employ them when farming becomes more challenging again than what it uh, than what it has been frankly for the last uh, couple of years at least in our neck of the woods here um, and so you know hopefully these concepts of being more efficient with inputs taking advantage of arrangement to get parity yields and create value uh, and minimize the need for expensive inputs uh, I know that, especially after getting through prepay season here at the end of the year, it costs a ton of money to do this. And when our prices go back down, uh, which they most certainly will for these commodities, uh, how can we utilize some of these arrangement tools uh, to lessen the blow and figure out how to hopefully remain profitable uh, when we get back to whatever the, the new low level plateau will be for the next uh, cycle that we go through. So anyway, Wanted to give folks an update. I hadn't posted anything for a while, uh, at least on what what we've been up to. Um, this is uh, you know more plot stuff, so I've got uh, stock cropper news now to follow. So stock cropper workings have continued to be uh, grinding in the background uh, here as I've uh, gotten away from harvest time into uh, the lull of winter, and uh, been doing a number of things in the background to continue to support that work. Um, as far as the uh, the 2023 season, so I wanted to address a couple things because I've had a number of questions just in the last week. So our hope uh, late last summer, early September, was to actually have our first uh, scaled production run of barns and have them available for sale. Um, but we've backed off on that uh, for uh, basically one primary reason is uh, if... I felt that it was needed to have more time to really resolve uh, the accuracy of our steering system that we came out with last year with a cluster clock nano 2 um, the uh, the new version was significantly bad, better than the first uh, but there was a couple kinks uh, that I wanted to put out to make sure that usability for people expecting a truly autonomous uh, self-steering barn that we needed to do a few more tweaks uh, before sinking a bunch of money into production models and uh, having customers have a uh, potentially negative uh, result. Because I can tell you from somebody that has uh, run this thing, uh, the autonomous features are phenomenal when they work and when they don't work, uh, it's a major drag and pain in the butt. And so uh, as somebody that's go you know uh, understood that in the development work of this, uh, I wanna make sure that uh, our first Cluster Cluck customers have a, a wonderful experience. Uh, other things that uh, that we're working on uh, currently is uh, working on uh, actually this week going to be working on finally getting our website updated and overall this is a process that I started uh, almost a year ago and has been honestly just fallen to the wayside uh, because of the busyness of other things but now that I have time uh, we're going to be focusing on that and my goal is to have our website relaunched uh, that does a better job of capturing our story, what we're up to, and better communicating uh, the stock cropper uh, to the masses uh, done here before planting season. Um, and last but not least, uh, one of the other goals that I want to uh, have checked off the box is uh, developing a cluster cluck uh, for backyard uh, use on acreages or in towns where it's zoned for uh, that allows backyard chickens. Especially now with the egg shortage, I think there's, uh, and egg prices going through the roof, there's a lot of interest uh, in people uh, getting their own food sovereignty in that space. And I think with what we've developed, it's not the actual concept of stock cropping, but I think there's uh, potential in that idea 
uh, to, to build a backyard uh, version of a cluster cluck. Much smaller, fewer animals, uh, but that autonomous movement to give people the ability to have livestock uh, and they don't have to be there to move the pen. So you, can, you still have the autonomy of going to the lake for a weekend and your cluster cluck uh, will do the rest for you. So um, anyway, that is, uh, that is the update. Um, you know, and so full intentions for 2023, I should say, uh, we will continue to do our stock cropper plot work where we'll have our barns out working and uh, we will have uh, uh, one of our cluster cluck nanos um, deployed uh, potentially at a very uh, prominent spot in the Midwest. Uh, I'm not going to publicly announce that yet, um, but one of the nanos that we built last year, we have intentions in putting in a spot that's going to have a lot of eyes on it for somebody that is interested in this uh, strip intercropping model and the challenges that growing soybeans have in the in between rows of corn. So stay tuned on that news. And uh, we also have uh, some very exciting news uh, that I can't share a lot about yet, but probably in the next update video, um, that is, uh, that's going to be a big deal for this project in the 2023 season. So I'm going to be really cryptic about that, but that's all I can really say without tip in hand at it right now. But uh, a lot of good things. I'm excited. Uh, I'm ready to get out of the doldrums of winter. This We've been in like this constant state of gray fog here in northern Iowa for the last like two weeks. And uh, I'm ready for things to be green and uh, moving and moving forward with uh, this thing that we call the stock cropper. So that's it for this week. Uh, if you've got questions, hit me up at thestockcropper at gmail.com uh, or reach out to me on social media or leave comments down below. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your continued support and